Hey guys, I'm Tree, and this channel is all about helping you to become a better streamer. Stream harder, not harder. And today we're gonna take a look at Twitch Studio. But first of all, I stream every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, 8 p.m. Central European time. The link is down underneath in the description. Twitch Studio, you can find it in your dashboard and then streaming tools. There you can download it. And then just log in with your Twitch. If you're only here for the review of this program, make sure to check out the description. I left a timestamp there, which will automatically get you to the review and skips the whole setting up part. So now we have downloaded it, we have logged in and setting up this program is actually pretty easy. You will get this like setup wizard at the start and you just connect everything, your microphone, your webcam if you have those, it will just automatically ask for it. Bum, 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 bum. After setting up your microphone and your webcam, it will automatically make layouts for you so you don't have to do that. But I would recommend personalizing this because these are really general. I recommend skipping this step for now and setting it up later because that's easier. Then you can choose your stream quality. It will automatically say if your bandwidth and your hardware can handle this. So for example right now for me it's a 1080 60 FPS, should be good for my hardware and my internet speed, so that's awesome. For you that might not be the case because this is, this is quite high. Don't be afraid to stream at 720p because that's more than enough. And TV programs mostly run in 30 FPS, which means that streaming in 60 FPS is not at all necessary. If you want to change this because your hardware or your internet can't handle it, or you just don't want to stream at this high of a settings because you don't have transcoding yet, if you want to know about transcoding, check out this video, I explained it in there. But then you can just click on tweak settings. You can choose one of the presets, but you can also just choose a custom one. Then you get the resolution of your screen, which is for most people just 1080. If you get a 4K, obviously that's not the case, but most people just run a 1080p screen. Then you got the FPS, I recommend choosing 30 or 60. Then you have the bitrate, this just depends on your internet. If you can handle a good bitrate, I recommend pumping it up a bit, because a good bitrate just looks a bit more clear. This is basically just a sort of refresh rate, so if you have a lot of bitrate, there will be more smooth movements and if you have a really really bad bitrate you will see a lot of blocks in the screen which doesn't look that great. Try and go for 4k bitrate. If your internet can't handle it though try to go for as high a bitrate as you can and don't stream higher than 720p because the more pixels you have in the screen the more the bitrate has to spread across the the screen and the worse it will look. And then you have the encoder which will either be your graphic card or your processor. Try and choose the one that has the most lean way. You can find this out by just trying to stream and open your task manager. If you then go to performance, you can see the performance of your CPU and your GPU, which are your processor and your graphic card. Try and see which one uh, goes the highest in percentage. For example, right now you see that my CPU has around 40%. If I scroll down a little bit, you can see that my GPU only has 20. This means that I'm probably better off encoding with my graphics card because it has a lot more space left to work with. This is very personal and is different per setup, so try and see which works best for you. And if you've set all these settings, you can scroll down a bit and test them. It will take a second and then you will see the results. If you have all ticks, you're good to go. And if you see some crosses, make sure to tweak some settings to lower quality because apparently your rig can't handle it. And then we're done with setting up the stream quality. Now we're in the main program where you can see your chat and your activity feeds, but also the scenes and what is actually on the screen right now for your stream. So now you see we have this beautiful mountain in the screen, which is our main screen. Uh, this doesn't look great yet because it's just a standard settings. We didn't do anything with it yet. On the left we can switch the scenes to be right back. But we can also make a new scene by clicking on the plus. Which obviously would be empty because it's new. So let's start with the main screen. What we need to do is we want a game capture in there obviously and probably your webcam if you have one. So to edit the screen you want to right click on it and click on edit. If you hover over the screen you can see which elements are already in it. 
for example here is the alert box and there's a game capture here there's also a webcam here already but because i'm using obs to record this it's already using up my webcam and you can't see it yet then we got the wallpaper which is the big mountain and the background core but well we don't see that because there's a mountain in front of it if we want to change our alerts we just click on the alert box and then on the right you can change the colors of things and even play them to just see what they are click on an alert to edit it let's just do the follower one right now we could choose a color right here let's make it blue and we can even change the sound of it by browsing into our documents i choose my youtube intro for now so you guys can see that you can upload a custom file let's try it out Now think of it, this was actually the first draft and not actually our intro now. We can also make it louder or less loud. And we can even choose a different icon instead of the pop champ. So for example like this. Ta-da! We changed our follower alert. You can do that with like every alert. Do we need to do something else in this scene? Not per se. If you have a camera in here we might want to move it around but you just basically move it. It's not that hard. You just click on it and move it around. If you use a green screen though, you need to get a chroma key in because otherwise the green screen will still be behind you. Make sure to click on the webcam and then a chroma key to add one. If you want the webcam border because you're not using a chroma key, you can also add that. If you want to add another element to the scene, just make sure to click on the plus next to the layer section. For now there's no possibility to add chats, which I think is kind of sad. We can still add browser source, which is called embedded web page here. If you want to see the chat, just use embedded browser page and use stream elements or stream labs to actually get your chat from. To be honest, everything is kind of set up. You can tweak things a little bit by doing it like I just did. Everything works kind of the same, so you should be able to figure it out really easily if you just saw how I did the other things. If you have any questions, just leave them down in the description below, I would say. So now it's actually time for the review part of this video. What do I think of this? Uh, it's really, really, really easy to get started. You just... You don't even need a stream key anymore, you just log in with your Twitch and... Everything is kind of set up because they made these three scenes for you already, which I think is really great for somebody who doesn't have any experience with streaming or is just not as technical. It doesn't cost a lot of effort to get started. But the big downside of it is that it has not a lot of features. You, you cannot do as much as with OBS at all. There are a lot of things missing and that makes it easy. Don't get me wrong, that makes it a lot more easy, but if you are uh, serious about streaming, if you have streamed for a bit, if you already used OBS, I do not recommend using this program then. I just rather have you stick with OBS or XSplit or Streamlabs OBS because that has a lot more options and I think it's a lot more professional to use then because you can customize everything and if you use this program it will always look a bit like somebody else's stream. I guess like those people that stream from the PlayStation, right? If you see people that stream from the PlayStation a lot of people have the same layout because they have this like bar with like how long they have been streaming for, the chat and then a little webcam in the top right. It looks the same in every stream and it's a lot cooler if your stream looks different than other people. And I kind of feel like this is going to be the new PlayStation thing. People are going to use this program and then every, every stream is kind of having the same layout. And I don't really like that a lot. But I definitely think it's a plus for people that just don't know how to get started. And for people that just want to start out streaming and don't know if it's something for them, just go with Twitch Studio and see if it's something for you. If it's something for you though, I do recommend learning OBS. I've got a ton of tutorials for you about OBS, so don't worry, I got your back. <laughs> so a little recap, easy to use, but it doesn't have much options, so it's not for the professional streamers. What do you think of the program? Leave it down in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, tick the bell icon for notifications whenever I post a new streamer support video, you will be the first to hear about it. And I will see you in the next video.